Hello, everyone. My name is Sun Xiangguo. I'm now a PhD student from the Southeast University of China. In today's presentation, I'd like to share that our work titled this multi-level hyperage distillation for social linking prediction on sparsely observed networks. Our co-authors include Professor Dr. Bo Liu and Dr. Zhou Xingqiao and Mr. Qing Meng and Han Wang. They all came from the Southeast University of China. And Professor Hong Zhiyin is now working in the University of Queensland, Australia. And Dr. Hong Xu Chen is now working in the University of Technology, Sydney. In this presentation, I will first introduce the motivations of our work and then summarize the challenges and the contributions in our paper, followed with a detailed solution, and then we present the evaluation results. As we all know, with the popularization of online social networks, such as the World Wide Web, citation networks, and the social platform, people transport their social life mostly online and result in considerable heterogeneous social interactions. Projecting these social relations play a fundamental role in users' behavior and uh, uh, online social phenomena. And it has been widely used in uh, recommended system, uh, anomaly detection, and sentiment analysis. So, uh, formally, the social linking prediction aims to distinguish whether a pair of nodes in a network has a specific type of link or not. But, limited by many practical issues, such as the data availability and uh, such as the, uh, the privacy concerns, we mostly cannot see too many social relations. And this means the observed network is extremely limited, making the observed net network very sparse. To overcome this, most existing work try to learn higher level information via the pairwise learning. And however, as seen in this figure, if the observed network is extremely limited, we don't have enough pairwise links to support the smoothness of node embeddings. This might limit the performance. On the other hand, a hypergraph allows one hyperage to connect multiple nodes, so they are better in higher level learning. But most works use a predefined hypergraph, which is toneless with, without too many hierarchical structures. So, considering these two corner cases, we can conclude that uh, a better choice to predict the social links in the sparsely observed network is to keep a balance between these two cases, which means uh, to learn the multi-level hyperages from data automatically. And that is the main problem we want to solve. To this end, uh, we need to consider the following challenges. The first one is how to learn better higher level relations on sparsely observed networks. To address this challenge, we propose to use the hypergraph to learn the latent higher level information, which can overcome the limited observed pairwise links. The second one is how to learn multi-level hyperages automatically from data. To address this problem, we designed the hyperage extension strategies to generate multi-level hyperages. The hyperages are generated automatically and follow the long tail distribution. And the third one is how to learn better node embeddings for linking predictions. To address this challenge, we designed a multi-level hypergraph neural networks for uh, heterogeneous graphs, which can take both the pairwise links and the, the, the hyperages together. And our primary contributions can be summarized as follows. First, we propose a novel hyperage generation framework using three well-designed uh, well hyperages extension strategies. The hyperages start from some basic graph place uh, and then extend themselves automatically following the power law distribution. Second, we focus on sparsely observed networks when predicting links, which is more common in practical applications. And we also prefer uh, multi-level hypergraph neural networks, which can improve the performance. And uh, we also evaluate our approach extensively with state-of-the-art baselines uh, for real-world datasets. Our solution can be seen in this figure, uh, and it consists of four main components. The model is a stack of multi-level hypergraph neural networks, which are named the HNNs. And each HNN layer utilizes the corresponding hypergraph, 
and uh, that the heart rate is updated from the previous date. The initial heart rate ages are actually constructed by the graph loads. And then we design three uh, heart rate age expansion strategies to expand these simple, simple, uh, simple heart rate ages at a higher level heart rate ages. And in the end, we output the embeddings and the hypergraph incident metric, which can indicate the hypergraph structure. To predict social links, we combine each layer's representations and then send them to the downstream link prediction classifier. First of all, we introduce graph loads as the initial hyperages to trigger a later hyperage expansion. Uh, which we, we, we choose the graph list because uh, they're structurally complete and each, uh, each graph list preserve an uh, exclusive structural union and they go beyond the pairwise relations, which means they're informative for link prediction on sparsely observed networks. However, they are not sufficient to preserve the global structures and a larger network usually contained uh, in normal graph lists leading to a larger number of hyper ages. And at the last, even though the graph lists are some kind of theoretical, but still not enough because of their uh, small number of nodes. Since each graph lid uh, can be treated at an initial hyper age, we then design three uh, hyper age expansion strategy to expand our uh, to expand or merge with other hyper ages. Here we define the transition probability from one hyper age to another hyper age, and it, it relies on two aspects. Uh, the first one is the correlations of the hyper ages, uh, which can be measured by the product of hyper age representations, and the the second is the connectivity between two hyper ages which can be evaluated by the Jacquard similarity. So based on the transition probability, we present three hyper age expansion strategies named the depth first expansion, uh, breadth first expansion, and hyper age uh, expansion. And as we can see in the right side picture, when we try to expand the hyper age E1 and E2, they, they may also succeed and include with each other. And as a result, the previous there's two hyper ages now overlap and are reduced as a one hyper age. On the other case, uh, E1 may manage to swallow E2, but E2 fail to embrace E1. And in this case, E1 become larger than before, but E2 stay unchanged, making the hyper ages hierarchical with the multi-layer structures. Therefore, we can learn the optimal hyper age numbers have a hierarchy and keep the best balance between the local and global structures. Having obtained the, uh, the hyper ages generated by our proposed strategies, we now present our hypergraph neural networks to deal with each level's hypergraph. The model takes the hyper ages from each level as input and then aggregates node presentations via a node level attention. Uh, hyper age level attention and, and semantic level attention. Uh, we use the node level attention because the nodes in the same hyper age usually have different importance and the mutual influence and, uh, usually are uh, not uniform. In addition, uh, many nodes in the network belong to multiple hyper ages because these hyper ages are uh, hierarchical and the impact from different hyper ages is also diverse. So to evaluate this uh, impact, we also obtain the hyper ages representations and then calculated each hyper ages weight. So in the second stage, we designed a hyper uh, a half age level attention. And finally, for the uh, heterogeneous graph, we also need to combine each semantic representations. Taking this uh, three step together, we can finally get the node embedding for downstream linking prediction. To train our framework efficiently, we first train the first level, uh, the first layer by minimizing the cross entropy uh, over all observed pairwise links and a sample ne negative links. And then we start the first level, uh, sorry, uh, uh, and then we start the, the first hyper age extension and generate a new hyper graph. Uh, with the new hyper graph and the node embedding of the first layer, we then fix the first layer and start to train the second layer. We repeat this process until the last layer training is finished. We compare our model's performance with other baselines, and here's the linking prediction results. We can find that even in a very sparse situation, our model still keeps the meaningful performance. 
And this confirms that our model is robust and it keeps ahead with a larger tolerance to the observed link ratio. Compared with manually designed hypergraph, our model uses the hyperages expansion to generate multi-level hyperages. For example, here are the distribution of the hyperages size and the node degree from their beginning state to the third level expansion. And we can see the initial hyperages only suggest a very weak hierarchy and uh, insufficient to support better performance. However, after the, uh, after the hyperage expansion, both node degree and hyperage size show the power law distribution. We also evaluated three hyperage expansion strategies. Uh, considering the network property, we can conclude that the, the breadth-first expansion does better when nodes have larger degrees. Uh, depth first extension is better than, uh, than the breadth first extension if the network contains longer path. And hybrid uh, expansion does better than the others, that is, in most cases. But it actually rely on two, uh, uh, re rely on both depth first and the breadth first uh, extension strategies and has more external parameters, which need more work to fit the data. We also analyzed the impact on hyper age expansion level. Take the depth first expansion as an example. If we expand half age too many times, we have to reduce the uh, accuracy per parameter at a higher level so that the, the size of learned half ages are in a, a reasonable uh, range. In other words, we use the depth first expansion strategy with a fixed uh, accuracy parameter to expand the, the initial half ages for eight times and report the result at each level. Uh, we can see that our model performance becomes better with the hyper age expansion level increase, but uh, it turns it, it then turns to grow slowly after we expand four times. This means we don't need to conduct too many hyper age expansions because uh, only a few times of, of a hyper age expansion are sufficient to make the hyper ages hierarchical and support our model to achieve better performance. And this is the main body of the work for the social language prediction on sparsely observed networks. Thank you for listening, and please do not hesitate to contact us if you have any further questions. Thank you.